Hello everyone and welcome back to my Transgalactic Trek in Elite Dangerous. This is going to be a very quick expedited episode. I'm condensing about six hours worth of travel into about half an hour and so we're gonna get through quite a lot here. Our first target is HD164585 and this is a system with a neutron star in it with a B-type as well. And so as we go here I'm interested to scan my first neutron star. There's the B-type though, but now I have to try and find a neutron star. Now neutron stars are really, really tiny and dense, so at this point I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to have the kinds of problems that I had with black holes. Basically neutron stars are like one step away from being black holes. Uh, it's just that the neutrons are keeping them steady instead of allowing them to collapse. But uh, here we see that the discoverer was Severian, and obviously everything around Thor's eye and the uh, Lagoon Nebula has been discovered already. Uh, so Severian took care of this and the Neutron Star. Unfortunately, there aren't any planets around, so that's a downside. But anyway, uh, I decide to take a look along the the orbit of this star to see where the Neutron Star might be. And you know, is the Neutron Star dim? Will I be able to spot it or not? Well, I spot a likely candidate there. And so I decided to head for that one. But, I mean, there's no guarantee that uh, you'll be able to see one so easily. It seems, though, that uh, this is the correct thing to aim for because my speed starts slowing down. And as I ping, I find it within the 500 light second range takes a while to actually be able to do the detailed scan though and actually we have to wait until I'm within five light seconds for that now this is a little bit tricky because even though the neutron stars are very small and as you can see uh, actually dimmer up close than it was from far away the problem is that because of the density they have all that mass and gravity as well and so I'm trying here to see how close I can get without falling into its gravity well. I take a look at the system map to see exactly how massive it might be. And you can see it's, it's more massive than our sun, but its radius is, well, there it says zero. But uh, I, I presume if you go out a few more digits, uh, we'll actually hit a number somewhere. Otherwise, it'd be a black hole. Actually, even a black hole has some radius if you calculate the event horizon. But anyway, uh, I get what I consider to be pretty darn close before the proximity warning. And eventually I get uh, little red flashing lights indicating that I'm going to have an impact. But yeah, at that point I just chicken out and decide to head on to my next destination didn't really get any warning buzzers or anything. Getting pretty darn close at that point. Anyway, you can see that the star field we've become familiar with on our approach to Thor's eye is still there. And my next destination is HD314900. This is another neutron star system. This neighborhood is full of neutron stars and black holes. But I've decided that there's no point trying to hunt for the black holes because of the same problem I had with Thor's Eye where I, I just couldn't find it. So I'll have to go back for the advanced discovery scanner in order to be able to find, find the black holes around here. Alright, well, no planets around here either. Actually, there's plenty of stuff. Unfortunately, it's all been discovered, of course. Row killing time has, has hit all of these done a pretty complete job of this system. Now it's gonna be hard to spot the neutron star this time so it's important that it has that that purple one nearby. Anyway I do some fuel scooping and it turns out I'm a little bit sloppy about it and that's gotta become important because uh, we gotta see I'm gonna continue to be a little bit sloppy and that's gonna cause me problems. But anyway uh, I don't get any damage during this one even though I get a little heat warning. But I do spot the purple 
purple objects that I might be trying to aim for in order to hunt for the neutron star. Fuel scoop disengaged. As the fuel scoop disengages, we cool down. No damage done. Now that that that's interesting. Also, you note the dancing stars here. We definitely have a dancing star issue. Lots of those. So, oh, did you see something fly by? Yes. And uh, the system said slow down, which meant that we were coming close to something. So I decided to send out a ping. And yes, in fact, um, that is the neutron star that just sped by. And uh, we were out uh, on our way to its companion. But, yep, there it is. Approaching at five light seconds here. Lots of dancing stars this time. So this one might be particularly massive. I haven't checked yet, of course, still scanning. The fact that it might be particularly massive and causing all these distortions becomes very important because even though I don't get as close to it as I did the previous one, I not only get the impact indication, but I also get further warnings. Warning. Heat damage. Yep, so it actually brings me out of my frame shift drive, and I immediately turn around and, and attempt to escape. Frame shift drive charging. Took a little bit of damage Four, there. Three, two, one, engage. And the heat levels are still pretty high. Yeah, that's definitely putting a dent in my hull. And probably some of my systems too. So yeah, that was a little bit sloppy of me. I should have checked the mass of it before trying to get any closer. Anyway, but uh, that did not deter me. I proceeded on to Lagoon Nebula, and specifically the the system at the center of it, which is Herschel 36. Herschel 36, I'm having a little trouble clicking on it there, but Herschel 36 is a double O type, and you see it there, two O sevens. So I've plotted for it. It's not a long trip from Thor's eye. Most of the time that will be covered by this episode is actually a trip back. It's a trip back home to Kakandi. But anyway, uh, here we have the first star on our way to the Lagoon Nebula. And this one was discovered already. There's an A-type, obviously. You can see a nice white star there. And the discoverer was Tutum Wessi. Tutum Wessi is as close as I can pronounce that. I'm not entirely sure how it's supposed to be pronounced. But I'm still very sloppy here. Now, I don't think this is too close to the star for the fuel scooping, but I do get quite hot. But you're gonna see that there's something else that happens here too, I think. But I am getting a little bit close to that star. There's my target. So I start proceeding way. Uh, I think I engaged my frameshift drive a little bit too early here. But you, uh, did you see some dancing lights there? I thought I did. And now I'm very curious because I'm not supposed to be getting this hot and I check how close I am to the star and you see I'm not that close. So and I wonder what's around here. But I'm already on my way out, so... But you can see, serious heating. 198%, we are taking damage. But I swear there had to have been something else there. Wasn't going back though, I took a lot of damage here. Considering I've got a lot of... A lot of jumping and travel ahead of me. Anyway, I let it cool down around this M-type star. And by the end, I have 
my ship integrity down to 89%. So that's not great and certainly reinforces the fact that I should be going home soon after I hit Herschel 36. Of course I want to go home anyway to grab that advanced scanner. So anyway, onward. Uh, this is the next star and is a T-Tory, but I'm gonna skip a few. This is a K-type. Gotta try and get through these quickly. I do try and make scans of them. Didn't find anything quite interesting. This is an M-type. As you can see. Okay. And then you can see the next one up is BV-YC15, which is a K-type. The previous few, the t tori the K-type, the M-type, those were undiscovered yet, so I'll probably get credit for those because I am headed straight back home after this. But uh, this, that K-type also I probably got, but this M-type was already discovered. We're getting close to where other explorers have already hit. And so when I take a look at the system map, I see that it was discovered by Ingo2020. And the next system is also an M-type. Again, you can tell by the B. So there's KC-UB. 3-1 and the discoverer, as I'll eventually find, is Becca Valentine, and I think we've we've seen that name before on our travels. And there is in fact seven objects around this star. Taking a look at what those are. There you go, system map. It's actually a bunch of asteroids, but also a gas giant there, a Saturn-like gas giant. Uh, and so these were discovered by Becca Valentine. Now on to the star right before Herschel 36. This is NGC 6530 CDZ 115. And this is a K-type. Now with those M-types already discovered, you can bet that this has been discovered as well. Okay, nothing too much around here. So, who discovered it? Is it a name we recognize? That's a big K-type, by the way. Antichthon! Yes, we recognize that name because Antichthon was also the guy who discovered Thor's eye in this black hole. So, um, big name around these parts. Nice that it's a cool name, of course. Because, uh, well, if you're going to get credit for everything, make sure you have a cool name. But, yeah. Uh, so, actually, it, in this area, it looks like Antichthon's basically got it covered. Anyway. So, uh, probably... Will we find that Herschel 36 has already been discovered by Antichthon as well? Or did Antichthon get beaten to it by someone else? I was about to note that K-type was very big. It looked like it was uh, on its way to exploding eventually. Pretty soon, I mean. Well, soon in terms of like millions of years. Okay, who discovered it? Antichthon! <laughs> yes. Yes. So I tipped that off already. But yeah, both of the stars, there are no planets that I could see. Maybe if I had the advanced scanner I could find them. The companion star is pretty easy to spot, so I head for it. Uh, even though it has already been discovered, uh, I figure I'll get some credit, uh, some fun, uh, some funds, uh, some money for for getting uh, ping on this as well. Shame, no. Uh, uh, well, we have to get closer actually, but there aren't any planets around this one either. So, interesting thing about Herschel 36. The A star, the primary star of the system, doesn't actually have a A after it, it's just Herschel 36. This one is designated B, but the other one doesn't get an A. So I just noticed that, that was a little bit interesting. Okay, now the trip back home. I'm partly, partly damaged, I need to 
get repairs, I need to get that advanced scanner, and my home base is Kakandi. And that's a long way off. How long is it? 4,335. No, I didn't try and make the whole trip at, on one sitting. Uh, this video encompasses two days worth of Elite Dangerous. And you can see it's been a while actually, it took me a while to edit this together. Anyway, that is my interim destination because I can't plot directly to Kakandi. So, Smojue Sector again. Actually, I think I have to divert a little bit from that particular system because remember that string of uh, really weak stars that we couldn't fuel scoop around? I had, I had that problem going back as well. So, I'll actually end up picking a different star. Anyway. You might have noticed it already, but the Lagoon uh, Nebula does have a faint haze around it. It's not as thick as some space games make nebulae, but uh, it does have a tint to space around it. So, you know, uh, a compromise, if you will, between the really unrealistic thick nebulae that are sometimes depicted and probably the even lower density that real nebula I might have. I don't know. I've never been in a nebula, so can't say one is too much more accurate than the other until I see. Okay, picking out the next destination. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna uh, show you the destinations because this was a long trip. This was a four-hour trip altogether between uh, the Lagoon Nebula and Kakandi. Those 4,300 light years I covered in four hours. So just hopping between my waypoints I didn't do any discovery along the way. I simply fuel scooped and moved on. I didn't even wait for this scanning except at my waypoints every 600 light years or so. So you can see here I'm doing one of those waypoint things and actually I park it for the day. This is where I stopped my first day uh, in this episode. So yeah, just sort of left it there and then plotted the next day to my next waypoint and you can see I have to re-click fastest routes because I'm starting over again after re-entering the game. So next up is the Blave Thua system. I've, I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce that either. So out of Smojoy and in this jump I am uh, encompassing hundreds of light years of travel here and magically we're going to end up in the Bleithua sector. Voila! Here we are, Bleithua DKI, or is that one? I think it's I. Uh, D9 64. As planned, of course. Next thing I have to plan is still in the Bleithua sector, but uh, quite a ways away. More than 400 light years there. Trying to take it in. Uh, good chunks, but I have to also find decent stars. After all, those stars are the only ones I'm going to be scanning on this trip, so might as well do the best stars I can find. That won't uh, deviate me too far on my way. Okay, so magically we are at this destination 400 or so light years from where we were. And the next target takes us into the very familiar Cole 359 sector, which we spent a lot of time in in the early days. So another few hundreds of light years pass by before our eyes. Oh, this took a while. You can be sure of that. Uh, this was... Thankfully, I had some entertainment playing on the side, otherwise this would have been very tedious. But yeah, I was, I was actually watching stuff while playing this, so it wasn't too bad. Okay, so finally I get to plot for Kakandi here. And there we have it. And so I head on to my final destination here. Homeward bound, if you will, but I do do have one little uh, stop along the way that was worth mentioning. This is 60C Serpentis. 
and you can see that down there, 60 Serpentis A. I deliberately wanted to stop by this star because I didn't know who had discovered it and I actually wanted to see who discovered this one. Obviously there's a tiny 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 chance that nobody had but actually Void had already. But it's a nice massive giant star there. This next star up is the one right before Kakandi. Yep, I just uh, go ahead and pass through this one quickly. No interdictions on the trip back home, by the way. I should point that out. Uh, I was very, very worried about that. Obviously, it would have been tragic if I... If I had been interdicted, lost the whole bounty of my exploration, that would have been absolutely horrible. But here I made it to Kakandi, but the, the journey's not over yet. We have to get to the station. And I'm, I've never been so nervous in this game than trying to get back to... Come on, pick the right station here. Darbo Terminal. And, you know, I'm watching all the little blips on my radar there. Very nervous about any approaching. I'm trying to go reasonably fast without overshooting, which could make me attempting target or something. Anyway, it, it's been a four hour trip in total. 4,300 light years, that gives you an idea of the pace. And finally, I do come out of my frameshift drive with a safe disengage at Darbo Terminal. And relief. So here we go, first docking in ages. Total trip, of course, was the entire way out from this and way back. So the trip distance was approximately, probably more than 8,600 light years. So we've we've uh, we've done a fair trip, and once we get that advanced scanner, should be heading for the transgalactic trip this time. I think I've demonstrated that I can keep my ship intact through that part as long as I don't do anything completely stupid like I did right here in this episode. <laughs> For the most part things have been pretty smooth. I decided to include the entire sequence here because we don't get to see this very much and we probably won't get to see this much in the near future either. So might as well enjoy it while we can. So here we go, can I make a proper landing here after this amount of time? I sure hope so. There we go. Okay, now let's see how much we get to make from our exploration. Totally have no idea at this point. I don't read any articles online or do anything like that. I don't uh, look at wiki pages because I want to discover stuff. And I don't want things, you know, spoiled, if you will. But first I decide to take care of the cost of travel. So I do my repairs. You see I have 202,000 credits. We'll need to have that as reference. My first page is already double that. And you can see that there. And so I'm taking a look. Here I've got... Uh, some lucrative sectors. HD 168444 was 72k. HD 168917, 58k. I'm glad I hit those. I couldn't have been the first discoverers of those HD sectors, but clearly those were very valuable. And, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, so I mean, I might, might have thought that, well, somebody else had discovered it, I shouldn't scan the stuff. Well, apparently it's good to scan those too, even if uh, others might have discovered it. Now you can see in the background there, the first to discover list. I'm actually. I've actually run this at 4x, so this is going by four times faster than it really did. I had to sit through all this, but I wanted the data. I wanted to know what I got the most credits for discovering, and so I recorded it all. And I sat through it, and it was a long, long time, because this is just the first page, mind you. There are many pages. I've visited hundreds of systems, and that was just 20 of them. So this is just, just what I got credit for discovering in 20 systems. And uh, I, I won't belabor this in future bits. I just wanted to show you this for the first time, but I'll point out the most expensive ones. Second page is also a 400,000 credit page, and we have there 
play through a F R N. Oh wait, that's the N M dash W E one dash nine. Sorry, I have a list. I I watched the video myself and made a list beforehand. So I've got a nice list of the systems that were most valuable, like this one. This is the DX dash LD seven dash two, which was ninety seven K, which is one of the two most lucrative ones. But I've made a list so that I can go back and check what made the made them so uh, so valuable and you can see one 5,000 credits discovery there and so I made a list of the discoveries that were worth 5,000 credits or more and so the Blathua NM-W ones were and here the pages tend, tended to be less valuable as I went, went along and that made it very tedious towards the end because I still had a lot of pages to go and so they were like chump change compared to the first two but not not at this point uh, here we're still getting some decent results that's 150 K that's pretty good too but eventually we're gonna get some pages that are like 10 20 K and by that point I'm getting tired of course I this is still after I made the two hour uh, trip you know the second chunk of the trip back so anyway another 97,000 worth sector I jot down the sectors worth 30,000 or more and the discoveries were 5,000 or more and you can see a big one there COL 359 sector CIL well anyway that was a good one and actually there was another location in that sector that was also valuable uh, so that was uh, CI-L B37-0 or 0 I believe and it was A5 and B2 in that sector that was really good and at a value of 90,900 that uh, A5 planet it was worth more than some of the pages that I have like this 12,000 credit page here very anticlimactic and of course waiting for it to register everything it gave me a grand total of one new discovery that page so not all that great but uh, they tend to jump around it's not a guarantee that uh, you'll just get less valuable pages after that I don't know how they order the pages so uh, that and here we've got 157,000 credit page so you know, just sort of random though tending towards less valuable towards the end so no idea what determines that yeah that, that's a good sector smojue ily d5779 k it looked like i'm just including this in case th some viewers might be interested in exploring in in elite dangerous and wonder what the value is with a detailed surface scanner these are the kinds of things you get uh, assuming you weren't the first to discover a black hole, right? I mean, of course, that would be extremely valuable, I assume. I haven't done it yet. Uh, but yeah, there are some valuable sectors out there. And you do get bonuses for discovery. And you can see I've already racked up 2.3 million, uh, 2.1 million, not including what I already had. But uh, in the middle of this, I had a little bit of a problem. And we we're about to hit it. Oh, right about... yeah, there we go. Connection error. Now, you can imagine how I felt after the long travel and getting a connection error like that. I wondered, where am I? Uh, well, I was at Darbo Terminal, and you can see uh, my credit uh, amount is correct. Uh, I had sold some more pages that I didn't cover there. But, uh, yep, I decided to uh, scroll down through this and note uh, 599 systems visited. 2.6 million credits earned through discovery so far. Anyway, uh, one weird thing is that I apparently didn't get my repairs done. So, got the credits for Universal Car Graphics, but repairs were not done yet. But I'm rich now, so I decided not only to just accept the fact that I hadn't done repairs, but also I decided to top up the fuel. Anyway, back to Universal Car Graphics, I proceed with selling uh, well, all the other systems I have to sell, but in the middle of all that, I decide that I've had a little bit, I've had it, I needed a break, basically, and I wanted to pick up my advanced discovery scanner while I was here. So, yep, I finally got the advanced discovery scanner. You can see I have a million credit buffer, so no worries there. And that's that job fulfilled. We have we have that and we're ready to go out to 
the galactic core with the full ability to discover what we can. But I'm not done here yet. I have a lot more credit to claim, a lot more pages to sell. That's 121,000 right there. Must be a good sector. Yeah, well, that's, that's not too bad. Maybe there's a better one down there? Yeah, yeah, there is. There's a COL 359 uh, WE-BB29-5 56k. And again, I'll figure out what's great about these planets like that one there, the BC1 planet, uh, 17,000 credits, way more than anything else. You'd expect that something like that must be, like, inhabited or something. Oh, there's another one, the 16,000 credit one, just close to that. Gotta wonder what's up with those planets and why they're so valuable. Maybe there's minerals, but knowing that will tell me what I should be looking for. All right, especially since now with the advanced discovery scanner, uh, we'll immediately be able to see all the planets, presumably because it has a uh, infinite range. So not infinite, uh, system-wide range. Okay. Well, anyway, I finish up my selling. I look at outfitting to see if there was anything I should buy. There wasn't, and I just ogle ships. But I don't buy anything. Uh, I could get the Cobra. I think I could probably outfit it now. It, uh, the, the the equipment is very expensive for the Cobra, and uh, I was also attracted to the Type Six transporter here, but uh, that might I might have trouble outfitting properly. I I would have trouble outfitting properly, so I decided to pass on those as well. But I mean, after all, we've we've done well with our little hauler, and there's no reason to change now. I've got enough credits to cover if some disaster should happen. I can replace it very easily uh, without any stress so I think this is a good ship to continue exploring with even though it might meet, not be the fastest not be, might not be the best ship in the game I think there's a certain charm to exploring the galaxy with a hauler alright so uh, that does it for for this I want to mention that I'm probably going to be live streaming uh, my journeys on Twitch uh, under the name Tyler Rays as usual and so uh, you can join me if I am uh, if I'm there I, I don't know what times I'll be live streaming it'll depend on my schedule and of course I have Kerbal Space Program and other things to record so um, but uh, I'll be on there uh, whenever I can be uh, trying to make my journey to the Galactic Center and I'll be trying to record uh, you won't miss anything because I'll be recording uh, using Fraps I'll make the priority recording for YouTube with Fraps and if there's any problem I'll just continue recording with Fraps instead of live streaming. But my goal is to live stream these as well. All right. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.